Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. All right. on the slab. I see you shiver with anticipation. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Into the Commaverse. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our favorite cult films. But first, let's introduce the panel. First, we got from across the pond, Mr. Dr. Von Hood. How you doing, sir? I'm very well, thanks, mate. How are you? Pretty awesome, man. Looking forward to getting into that subject matter. We also got Cliff from Cliff on Comics. How you doing, brother? I am lightning. <laughs> awesome. We also got Rich from Comic Cat Collectibles. How you doing, brother? What's up, everyone? How am I supposed to be compete with those two, man? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and making his debut here on End of the Comiverse, we have Remy Q. How you doing, brother? I'm I'm doing. I, listen, I agree with the last statement because <laughs> after the I am lightning, I just yeah. Like, I, my brain can't handle the docile nature of the internet on episode six. I mean, because oh, yeah. yeah, five was like shattering, but like, I, I watched it like 20 times. I just, I just sit there and just like, I am lightning. And I'm like, yes, girl. Like, <laughs> power. Oh, yeah. We definitely going to be talking about episode six tonight. I hope everybody watched it. Yeah, there may be spoilers. <laughs> so I'm going to go through the chat real quick. First of all, here's the link if you would like to join tonight's panel. We're going to be talking about our favorite cult films or films that have garnered a cult classic. They may not have hit it real big you know, when they first come out, but they become favorites for everyone. First off, we got Kenneth Bird. How you doing, brother? Uh, he, got, he messaged me and told me he got his pa uh, prize package in. I'm glad you got it. I hope you liked it. Remy Q in the panel and on the chat. How you doing? As well as Cliff. How you doing, brother? We got KBDM. How you doing, brother? Also in the channel, Pat, uh, panel and chat, Dr. Von Hoot. And Lettuce Comics, new to the YouTube scene. Go give him a sub. Let's get those numbers up. And he's also part of this week's uh, Comic Spotlight. Yeah, I, I only found out about him today, I think, and I subbed him up. That's awesome. I think it's I seen it find yesterday. Oh, yeah. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and segue into that real quick. We're going to do this week's comic book, or excuse me, Commiverse Community Shoutouts, where I pick seven channels every week, give them a shout-out, check out their stuff. They make awesome stuff, and we're going to get that stuff going just as soon as I can. There we go. So this is this week's Commiverse Community Shoutouts. That was this week's Converse Community Shoutouts. Give every one of these channels a subscribe if you haven't done so. And as you can tell, I reached the bottom of the list. So if y'all got anybody y'all need to think I needs a shout out, let me know through Instagram or whatnot. I think we have someone in the back. Oh, we do have somebody back. Oh, 
Oh, it's the comic vet himself. How you doing, Chris? What's Good. up, Chris? Good. Look, our on, Canadian man? to Puerto Rican ratio is evening out because I am the centrifuge. And it's funny that Chris is here because I'm fixing to give a shout out to his only slash brother, Rob Fat Stacks. Congratulations to Rob hitting 2K. And I'm going to say that that is criminal because he should be at 10K by now. All the stuff he does, he should be at 10K. It's only a matter of time, though. Let's be yeah. honest. And Honestly, what is it? Only slabs alone should get, he should be a 10 K. Yeah. It's and, great. And to be fair, Chris should be as well. So, I mean, yeah. And yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe four, maybe four K for Chris, but the point okay. is, <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't, Hey, 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 don't, don't be hating on our Canadian brother here. The bill's hat is holding him back. Because he's Canadian, I'm allowed to do it. I actually <laughs> still have the video, the live video on my channel where, it was a test, and Chris was the one that popped up. And after it was over, with, he was the one that started giving me pointers on all this stuff. So I mean, and I cherished it. I still cherish it. And uh, believe was it Rob's got a giveaway show on the twenty seventh as well. Uh, go, is it next week? Yeah, no, I think it's, no, it's, no, it's May fourth. It's May fourth. May fourth. Right. Yeah. He's, uh, he's traveling. Which is going to be hard to tell. May the fourth is. Rob's giveaway free is comic free day. comic book day. Technically a Star Wars day. I was gonna say um, my whole my whole live show that night is gonna be devoted to Star Wars. Just a spoiler. Well, that's I not a be, yeah, that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. I may be if I join Rob in the day, I'll probably be joining live from the comic book store. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the chat real quick. Let's see, we got. Comic Rich saying, hello, Mellow Lettuce. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kenneth. I was worried about the posters, how they turned out, because here, here around here, I, I, I had two prints that I sent him, and there was no poster tubes or anything for me to put them in to keep them safe. So I did. I just rolled them up, you know, put a paper clip in them and prayed. So, I mean... So I'm glad they came, they turned out good. Rob, if I was sending them to Rob, he would have condemned me for the way I shipped those. <laughs> Canadian Survivors, how you doing, brother? All right, we got Gary B, the casual comic guy. How you doing, brother? And that is it for now. Um, so let's talk about, before we get into our subject, which is cult movies, what did everybody think about X-Men 97's episode six? We got, what, Life, Death, and then... Uh, Six was good, man, but it's tough to come after episode five. Oh my man. god! Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna bring this image up because you know with the parts with uh, Xavier and Lalandra and him, it was nice to see this little uh, outfit that Charles was wearing from 275. Yeah, I uh, I don't know about you guys, but I was so offended to hear that that my my solar system is uh, considered ghetto. Yeah, I know. <laughs> our, well, no, our galaxy is considered ghetto. Our Milky Way ghetto. Yeah, but do we really cherish what Deathbird says? I mean, <laughs> listen, I only cherish when she's right. She's... <laughs> Ain't she like the racist sister that we don't claim? Right? And, the, and the nerve of her, too, because at one point she was on the X Men. So this oh, is, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so this, is, this is very, very bad, naughty death bird. Maybe we'll get a nicer version or not, and we'll see what it goes on. I don't know about so, that. Like Canadian <laughs> Easy there, Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? I was trying to remember. It might have been Enter the Dragon, where uh, Jim Kelly made a comment that every corner, every town has a ghetto. When he's talking about, they're, I think they're in Hong Kong. Yeah. I mean, I, that's just true in general. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I used to tell people when they asked me where I was at, I tell them I was born and raised on the main streets of Caraway. If you've been to Caraway, there is no main street. So, I mean. <laughs> but yeah, who would know? Yeah. That's true. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, it's like it's like people joke about where I'm from, but I like you know, it's like the the crime statistics of my of my of my home are are alarming. Yeah, yeah. You don't come from How you know Southern comedy? Is really that bad? Cliff, now you in the Bronx too? What? Am I in the Bronx? No, Cliff. Is Cliff oh. in the Bronx? No, uh, my hometown is Newburgh, New York, and statistically, the the crime rate is alarming really? for such a small community. 
Now, um, and, right. and things are so bad there that I hope and pray that I can win the lotto and get some Tyler Perry money so I can actually do something for the community. Now, KBDM posted a question said, why is Xavier still alive? Now, I'm going to try to answer this, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but believe in the end of the last series, he was taken up in space, mm -hmm. and everybody – now, this is where I'm thinking when he comes back, it might be a bad thing for the mutants because, you know, they basically told the Earth that he got killed. So yeah. when he comes back and goes, hey, guys, here I am, you think that might have a backlash on the mutants? or Could anything be worse for them at this point? Well, you know, go I don't know. he's going to walk up in there and be like, I'm here, my brothers and sisters, with my alien queen bride. But yeah, think about it. But, my robot legs. But think, but th yeah, but think about it. They <laughs> got a guy. Man legs. Yeah. If you think about, it, they got a guy sitting in prison for supposedly murdering him. Yeah, uh, I thought. Oh, the, so he'll get a sentence reduction. Oh, yeah. poor scumbag. <laughs> so wasn't, you know. uh, <laughs> wasn't there opportunity to go in front of the UN because of Xavier's like sacrifice or, or yes. death? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I, yes. I kind of thought, like, I'm kind of thinking, like, if he comes back, the young's going to be like, yeah, you guys fudged all this. Screw you guys. Like, yeah. Oh, they could, but it could get really crazy depending on which way you want to go with it. If it were me, I would be diabolical. I'd have one group of, like, look, they made, they manufacture all this. Mutants are evil. And then I'd have a cult of people who are like, mutants are immortal. Like, you know, that's how this is happening. They're the second coming. And like, just go crazy with that, right? Just like, and have like, have like, you know, <laughs> wild infighting. So they're jumping all over the uh, Claremont story run because like the yeah. the story of this part with Charles and Deathbird and all that, that happened earlier than Gambit and Sinister chronologically. So I, th I think they're going to build this up. They're going to do like the, uh, the fall of the mutants with adversary back towards the end of the season or something. That's just my yeah. thought, but either that or they may save it for the next season. You never know. Well, the writer said that episodes eight through ten, in his opinion, were the best. Yes. So I, I do we'll like see. how they keep teasing Sinister. Like we had a couple mm -hmm. early episodes, and yeah. it's just like little little flashes, not even a full vignette of just Sinister. Because I always think like in the background to me, like it always comes back to apocalypse, but I like the fact that it's sinister for, for this season that it seems like. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, agree. we've already established apocalypse in the original series. Yep. So, I mean, I think it's safe to have sinister on his own right now. Oh yeah. But I always feel like I said that it always comes back to apocalypse because in the end, like it always comes back to an Omega level villain when, when, it, when we're dealing with the X-Men and, that first cartoon I always I, thought Sinister that. has caused plenty of uniquely yeah. sinister trouble. Look yeah. at Orchids, all sinister. In fact, clones of sinister, thanks, douchebag. And then, <laughs> what is the other one that's terrible? Even Sins of Sinister was all about him, like, like oh, I implanted my DNA in all of you. <laughs> I'm just glad that they brought him back. I was really worried after episode three that it was going to be... A one and more done. Of a, more of a cameo, yeah. Just threw him in there real quick, and then that was it. So the fact that they brought him back and they're kind of circling back around to it, I was really excited. I, about I thought that. the same thing actually after episode three. I thought it was, you know, like he should be a big bad, and I mm. thought they'd written him off after that. So it's awesome. Uh, for the record, I sent my sinister out for a signing event long before X Men started this season. Oh, wow. So just, just throwing it out there. Well, just because it's a good, it's just a good book. Period. But yeah. what I am what I am wild about is I am so convinced that he that Cable is talking about is Bastion. But does anybody else have any theories about who he is that Cable is worried about? Could be Strife, right? No, I mean, Cable came out. Yeah, That'd I mean, when yours. Cable was first dropped in, his 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 evil twin clone Strife came in with him. So you know. I thought Strife myself personally. That would so, be yeah. interesting. Gary, Gary, B, to answer your question, maybe we will see some non mutant superhero guest stars. We got, we're definitely getting cap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my I'd God. Like to see that mix in a little Kamala Khan in there. That'd yeah. be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Spider-Man shows up, especially that Peter Parker from that series in the yes, in exactly. 90s. Oh, that would be it would, amazing. It would break it the internet. Like, it would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, get that voice actor and everything. It's like, what is he doing here? He's like, I'm still on a multiverse quest to find my Mary Jane, but yeah. I see you guys needed help. And everyone's like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weren't they technically in the same universe? Because they are the, the same X universe. Yeah, yes. the X-Men crossed over with Spider-Man back in the day. And Captain America appeared in the final season of X-Men. So yep. it's all legit. Yeah. You know? Oh, and the Fantastic Four and Iron Man are in the same universe. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue into this week's uh, comic history. There's a little segment I do called This Week in Comic History. We got some pretty good books. We got one super book for this week, so I hope y'all enjoy it. Short and sweet, but this was the 86th anniversary of the first appearance of Superman. Yes, the most important comic book anniversary there is, in my opinion. Exactly. So, what do y'all think? <laughs> I, can, I, can, I don't know about you guys, but I can remember picking up that Transformers with Shockwave off the rack the, oh, day, yeah. the day it came out. Oh, yeah. I, I don't mean to be flexing my age, but I was so excited for that. So excited for that series. Oh yeah, and that's and a really I, awesome, a really awesome cover too. And I remember getting quick chocolate mix and and filling and ripping the label off and mailing it in so I could get my ash can version of Action Comics number one. Oh hell! <laughs> so I'm dating myself a bit. I have the quicks. The <laughs> version of Action Comics number one, which oh, yeah. only reprints Superman's origin and not the entire Action Comics number one. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting, yeah, because, you know, not only was it the first Superman, but it was the first Satara and the first yep. Tex Thompson as well. Yeah. And first Daily Star, first Lois Lane, yeah. first George, what's his name? Well, I can't remember, and I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty really cool. We'll try to get that book. <laughs> Just remember, if y'all really want to surprise me for my 50th birthday in four years with a 0.5 action one, like that's great. Oh, sure. <laughs> There's so many for us to choose from out there, too. In the 0.5, right? And what does a 0.5 even go for these days? Like a half a mil? I don't know, but you know, there's like a CGC 9.8 like corner panel of the cover of issue one, right? Like Legit question though, is there actually a 0. 0.5 on the census? I I think don't there know. Is, yeah. That's a good question. Incomplete copy would be uh 0. 0.5, right? You could be complete and be a 0. 0.5. You could, yeah. but usually if you're complete, you're a one off. Remy, you're, you're not you're the only one. I need that 135 too. Yeah, I need to get Oh my god, the CGC 0. 0.5 of action one is a hundred thousand dollars. I thought it was more. Well, no, because yeah. most of the, a lot of the cover is eroded. I like. Uh, I think I need four single issues to have all the Dark Phoenix saga. Of course, two of them are one twenty nine and one thirty, and then the other one's one thirty three and then one thirty five. So I mean, <laughs> you have one hundred You have one hundred one. No, I don't have one hundred one. But right now, I'm just working on Dark Phoenix. Then I'll worry about Phoenix. I got X Men ninety four though. I saw that. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to bring up Brian again because this is going to segue into something. We all know it's coming, and that is the CBC Awards are fixing to start. So I'm going to play this little video for Brian. He was nice enough to send it to me. You 
better watch out if you ain't gotta be the road ahead of full prop seed to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day with the bones clean. I feed him all the hate and he grows me and he gets caught through a big kiss off quick. And if you cross him, you might drop dead. And play it again. Of, okay. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who aren't aware, CBC Awards was created by Brian and it's a way to give back to the community. So you can go to www.cbcawards.org and cast your nominations for your favorite YouTube channels, the channels you think deserve to win these illustrious awards. And um, hashtag recognize or acknowledge me. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so guys, uh, y'all got any, before we get into the main topic, which is our cult films, do y'all have any comments y'all want to show off? Because I wasn't able to make it to my LCS this week because the bill's kicking my butt. But, you know, if y'all got something y'all want to show off, just let me know and I'll spotlight y'all. I'm ready. You're ready? Well, then we'll start with Cliff. I'll go after Cliff then. All right. All right. I, like, show us what you got. All right. As Wonder Christmas Woman, Day. Amazing. Easy now. <laughs> Don't worry. I understand that this show is PG 13. Um, Wonder Woman's amazing. <laughs> Freaking Tom King and Daniel Sanford are doing amazing. This is the A cover. Love it. All right. What's up, Mark? Nightwing. What's that? We got Mark from Legion of Comics. Oh, Why didn't I see Mark? He's right down here in the corner. Oh. <laughs> you Damn, like that. this is terrible. All right. This, how dare they? I, I wrote to Key Collector complaining that this did not appear in their list of variants. For the legacy issue 300 of Nightwing. All right. It's gorgeous Dan Moore work. All right. Probably the best Avengers book we have right now Avengers Twilight. Yep. And it's a potential future. That last page was amazing. It, it, dude, every issue. No I spoilers. Could, I haven't read it yet. No spoilers. I'm not going to say anything. Just every everything is amazing. Of course, Superman number 13, part two of the House of Brainiac. Also amazing. That is amazing. And of course, because I love a crisis, the only crisis on infinite earths that matters. Replay. Well, there's only two, I guess. Some ultimate Black Panther. Cliff's World Shyness, which is always fun. That was so good. And oh my, the last three is just my love of Spider Man. It's spectacular Spider Man and Spider Boy and Miles Morales. That was really good. Miles was good. Again. Like, they, it's almost with one exception. It's almost every Spider-Man book I currently enjoy. Uh, so, Rich, I guess it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, new stuff. These are a couple weeks old, but uh, I wanted to show them off because they're cool variants. It's the uh, Darth Vader Sabine Wren Rebels variant. Nice. Ooh, nice. Which is uh, pretty dope. Uh, I didn't even uh, get these, but they sent me three different covers. But this one, the Ghost Rider uh, Final Vengeance. Yeah, I like Half it. foil. Oh, yes. yes. That's awesome, awesome cover. Delivered. Yeah, that's badass. And this one's not a variant, but I just wanted to point this out. Does this look like anything familiar? Can you see it? Can you hold it closer? You don't think this looks like Crash Down number one homage almost? Like kind of taking a swipe at him or something? But the no, I, mean, I guess I can see what you're saying. Stabbed in the face. When I saw, that, I saw the cover. I'm like, that looks familiar. But Why also, most of the crash down covers are also homages. The A cover is just a close up of girls' face. Oh, head, head. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I got a couple slabs back. I got the first Spider Punk. Ooh. Dan, Dan Slot sign nine four. Just like about nice. that. Does it recognize that it's the first appearance of Spider Punk on the label? Just out of curiosity. That's a great question, man. I'm glad better. that you put it that better. way, DBH. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First appearance of Spider Punk. Says it okay. back because I got a custom label. And then a good old Spider Boy. There we go. Nice. I didn't have the uh you know the variant of it with the uh, Spider Boy in the cover, but it's just Dan Slot and Humberto Ramos, double sign, nine eight. Was super psyched for that, and it's it still counts as the true as it's still a first printing. Yep, yep, cover yep. A. Um, 
And then this this book, man, this book blew my mind that I finally have this in my hands. You guys might have saw my Instagram, my video. There she oh, is. Oh, there we go. There she is. Nice one. It's gonna, ah, guys, this the kiss is so good. <laughs> oh, that's man. it. That's that's what I got to show today. Nice. All if right. you're gonna go big, get the first jackal. Get the first jackal <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anybody got anything they want to show off? Or I, I do. All right, Chris. I do. Your turn. So somehow I got my grubby little hands on this. Wow! What the hell? No spoilers. <laughs> All I have to say is, oh my, oh my. This yeah, I've already is... heard from Mark the the oh my. Oh, I, it, I hate I, you I, now as much as I. I, hate I don't Mark, know. So. I wasn't if, if Mark read it or not, but yeah, this. Yeah, last week. Incredible, incredible, mm. but uh. Because Tony is a member of my channel, I just wanted to spotlight a couple of the cool books that I'm giving away. Uh, hey. I picked this up recently. Oh, this that is, is beautiful. The Mayhew Amazing Spider-Man 21. Yeah, 21. Yeah, real cool. Is that an exclusive or something? Yeah, it's exclusive to Comic Exposure. All right. But yeah, uh, I just wow. wanted this. I just wanted to point out that yeah, her hair looks lovely. Yeah, this is pretty hair. I mean, it looks yep. okay, but I mean, I have hair, so I don't look at it as as valuable. Yeah. It's the, mm. the breast, the breast hair I've ever seen. I mean, best yeah. hair. To be fair, I have actually got pretty good breasts, so it's. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good night, scary. everybody. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, the Silver Zero, uh, one of my personal favorites. Alpha Flight Number One, but but I think there's five different first appearances in that. You know, it is what funny because that was criminally. That you know, you can still get that one for cheap, and that's almost criminal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Void Rivals Four. If you know, you know. Yep. Uh, Feral Number One. That was Void Rivals Four. Energon Universe One, baby. God, that free comic book day. God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need I, to talk about not, that behind. We need yeah. to talk about that backstage when no one else is around. Forward, but my God, the Void Rivals entry in it. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Yes, like. Just like yeah. we're going down this road already. Let's go. Full tilt boogie. Like, let's go. Uh she doesn't really need an introduction. Who is that? Oh wow. Is that and, Cara Zarel? Yeah. <laughs> and uh also which which will be part of my giveaway is this Jason Fabox signed uh Rook Exodus number one. Oh super sweet. So yeah. Hey, ben. Loved it. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Anybody got anything? Or I've got books. You got books? Yeah. All right, Mark. I will show you what I've got since I can't make it on Wednesdays. But uh, Jay Garrett wrapped up, and this was a 10 out of 10 miniseries, like 10 out of 10. Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. I don't have a cool of a cover, but yeah, Ghost Rider. I'm, I'm excited for it. The uh, House of Brainiac Part 2. Some John Stewart Green Lantern goodness. That is an awesome cover. I didn't realize it till way later, but this was this is like a seven dollar book. Yeah, I wow. get it because I get Hulk. So like, I'm like, yeah, Hulk. And then I get home, I'm like, really like, wait, a minute, that's a six ninety nine for what? Yeah, just, one new yeah, story and one reprint. Yeah, two extra I, pages. I knew that like two thirds of the book is a reprint, so I'm like, are, wow, they got me. Yeah, they got you. <laughs> they got me too because I ordered it. Damn good. <laughs> and the funny thing is, if I would have saw it before I paid for it, I would have still paid for it. The best thing Marvel's putting out easily, yes. easily. Yeah, close right. This is this is has a strange amount of heart to it, despite it being about ninth dimensional imps. Wicked cool. I'm looking forward to that. Those are wrapping up like. Cobra Commander Duke only have one issue left of each. And you can see where they're streamlining into uh, the next set of mini. Uh, the end of this was very telling. Cliff, do you read this? No. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Once I label something trash, I don't go back. Yeah, that's how I've been. Like every issue, I'm like, I'm dropping this title. And then I read one. I'm like, God damn, now I'm glad I, I'm glad I read it. And it's not for the story. It's for like the little uh, universal Easter egging they're doing. It's like integral in like setting up stuff. So that kind of sucks because uh, 
I don't care about the main body story, but I care about what they're doing that lends to that. Oh yeah. But uh, talking about some uh some variants, I I, I got this. Ooh, that's Ooh. nice. That's gorgeous. Oh, that one's like twelve dollars from that store. Ooh. I gotta shout this shop out. It's called Buy Me Toys and Comics. It's Indiana's largest comic shop, and they do retailer exclusives. They don't do a ton, like they're not the normal format shop or anything, but they do retailer exclusives and sell them for twelve ninety nine. They're not trying to cap on people. But it, that the three of these are a connecting set, which is cool, which explains like the lighting. Like the campfires over on Geiger's side, so mm -hmm. the shadows and stuff. It's a, it's actually really really cool, man. These things are these things are dope. That's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah they are cool. Decided to find those. But yeah, fun stuff. Nice. And uh, for Tony, I know Tony, you'll appreciate this last thing. I did a little running around, and uh, this will be in one of my videos next week. But I managed to find a few more of these. <laughs> oh my goodness that's a lot of go mark, mark you're not going to believe this but rob actually gave one of those away today on only slabs i was mm -hmm. kind of speechless i i didn't oh, know wow. yeah why I, was you talking, that. I was talking to him about the uh copies that he got that were sent to him with the uh, label the label things yeah i'm like can i just get those from you then i thought about them like it's really not worth shipping it to me <laughs> get some here i got some here they're here we'll get to heroes yeah, I think yeah. I'm a, I think I've passed 40 copies now. I'm not on Southern Comic Geeks level, but I, I think I have like seven or eight. Can I have them? I'll buy them. Nope, nope. <laughs> Every time I see them in a dollar bin, I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah, I so think I, I I'll just go say I think I have three. My numbers are my numbers are low. Yeah, I uh found them in a 50 cent bin and I ended up getting like uh 25 books for 15 bucks. Wasn't a bad deal. A decent story. I don't get why people hate on it so much. I, I thought wow. it was great. I haven't met someone yeah. that hates on it. We all just yeah. everyone appreciates an undervalued book. Yeah. It's not undervalued. There's just a million copies, like a yeah. literal million copies. What are you gonna do with that? You know, I think that Big first Carolina. appearance of Bishop, man. I think I got like five copies of that. I think I got all of them in dollar bins. Yeah, these things just lay around. Disrespect. I don't know how many. Yeah. I, I still yeah. find it in dollar bins, but it was heavily printed. I don't have one. Uh, BBH, Remy, y'all got something y'all want to show? Not, not comics wise. Okay. Yeah, I got some books. Uh, yeah, I don't have any comics, but I got plenty of DVDs and we'll show for the up recently. Oh, Ooh, that is oh, nice. Remy. That's oh awesome. my god! Remy, I mean, so these oh were god. all these were all half price. So I got this was three bucks. What? Really? Yeah. They're selling uh, hammer. I'll give you four for, for a buck fifty. Oh, nice. I got a piece of stack. This was, uh, I love this pose too because this is like that Silver Surfer 4 pose. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That is, yeah. Oh, that's a nice cover. Beautiful. Oh, my God. All this Thor goodness. Yeah, picked up some Thor. Angel picked up uh, some Phoenix song that she didn't have. Yeah, I enjoyed that story, actually. Yeah, she Adver got uh, I think she adversaries got in that from, three, uh, four, and five. So we need to get one and two, but that's it. All right. Awesome. That's great. Well, I will say hi real quick to uh where is it now? I got lost in the chat. Lady F, how you doing? And we got the chat just popping tonight. So I'm gonna get to tonight's theme, which is our favorite cult films and i'm gonna play a little couple of little videos and we'll try to put them together which may or may not be successful but uh films that we're not talking about the box office you know big box office movies we're talking about movies that might not have did that well when they first came out but they garnered some kind of a cult following and these are just a few of my favorites and i hope you enjoy it, the video all right you primitive screwheads listen up Look, you can't take away people's right to be assholes.
Now, if your mother could kiss like that, huh? You know, your shoelace is untied. Visitors from the past shall return to the darkness whence they came. So you see, you're never too young to die. It's all in the reflexes. Call me Snake. You broke that jaw? You deserved it. You should be loyal to your hero. Make it turn on you. God is our co pilot? Mm hmm? Remember our car? Yeah? Two seats? Two seats. Where's he gonna sit? Where? <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed that. I threw a few things together. Well, that was awesome. The wreath yeah, was, was in there. Great montage. That was sweet. <laughs> and it's funny because I, uh, out of all the ones, I forgot to put show enough in there. So I feel like I let the whole thing down. Show enough. Who's the master? So he gets an honorable gets mention. So, guys, who wants to start first? I mean, as far as cult films go, what are some of y'all's favorite? You know, underappreciated films. I mean, what's the name of that one with uh, Gene Simmons in? It's just the name's escaping me. Right, the the one where it, they're on the dam. Right. Oh, the, the end, one. If that was that, that was never too young to die. Never too young to die. That's it. Yeah, I I only saw that a couple of years ago. Bought it on Blu-ray <laughs> just because I like the cover, and um, it's amazing. Everybody should see that film. It's hilarious. It's it. not exactly the most politically correct film these no. days, but it's still tremendous entertainment. I mean, I you, got, recommend it. you got George Lazenby, John Stamos, you got Gene yeah. playing the Morphodite, you got Robert England. Um, I mean, there's other people that I'm probably forgetting, but I mean, it was pretty cool. Yes, yes, Mark. Who is Gene playing? <laughs> He's playing hey. the Morphodite. His name is Velvet. <laughs> Velvet hey, Magnoid, yeah. It's uh, yeah, I was gonna say, uh, there was an alarming amount of hermaphrodite cross dressing <laughs> or drag queen villains all in, that. in the in, late 70s and 80s, and yeah, in the large. presentation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, and I'm not saying that uh, that that members of my expanded alphabet community can't be villains. Uh, I was just a little alarmed that they were so often villains in such a specific amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to play the clip. There's this clip in there where he goes to a club where he or she, Gene, is performing. And uh, they do a little backstage thing, and he does. He signs an autograph, and he goes, I'll trade it for a kiss, and he sticks out his tongue, and he's like, uh, some other time. <laughs> Seems about right. Yeah, it's a great movie, but yeah, that <laughs> the the whole premise hasn't exactly aged well. No, you know what I mean. Well, and that, you 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 are right that that there is a lot of villains that are you know cross dressing or trans. It's bizarre how much it was like a trope in in especially action and horror. They are the two genres well, where it happened a lot. I was going to say, you see Gene in Never Too Young to Die, and you're like, wow, okay. And then you watch him in Runaway or Wanted Dead or Alive, and you're like, alive, wow, yeah. man. Especially Wanted Dead or Alive. I mean, he he plays a pretty dang good villain. Yeah, I was surprised that Rucker Howard never got more of an action hero type of yeah. film after yeah. uh, Wanted Dead or Alive. And, oh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Hobo Fuck. with a Shotgun is amazing. Yeah. I love that film. Rucker Howard was Blind wonderful. Fury. Don't forget about Blind Fury. Yeah, it, Blind Fury is classic. That's where George Lucas stole his ending of episode one from. Oh, well. Earth Girls are easy, yep. Earth Girls are easy, yeah. I'm watching Dr. Von Hoot's gears turn just then. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, 
Remember, he cut old dude in half and sent him out the window, and he didn't separate till he fell, right. just like Darth Maul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. When I saw episode Ooh. one, I'm like, I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that's how that's how I felt when I saw Storm flying in this week's X Men. <laughs> <I've seen that. laughs> And not only that, but she was wearing her classic 80s outfit. No, I was in love with that. It was the fact that she did all this flying, flying next to the animals, flying over her reflection in the water. I'm like, Supergirl Superman. and Man of Steel and Superman Returns did all of these. <laughs> yeah, but doing popping in something doesn't hurt as long as you do a good job when you do it. They man. did a great job. I was I was so in the moment. I was so I'm still in the moments. I'm still in the moments. Well, Tony, I don't have any cross-dressing villains for you but i got some furries uh okay. donnie, Dar donnie darko is one of my go-tos that i felt like was under the radar till well after it came out you know uh-huh oh yeah donnie darko was amazing one of the coolest time travel movies, a unique premise ever <laughs> oh well i just thought Along with the creepiest character that you could have because the rabbit was frank yeah frank above and beyond yeah. I've only seen Donnie Darko once. I've had it what? for years. You know, yeah, years, years, years but I only ever actually watched it once. <laughs> yeah, the end of Weird. it was so intense oh. when the they, they body kind of corrected and the engine fell on him and Patrick Swayze woke up just crying at the path that he saw of him being the uh, the perv, you know, like because I wasn't him and that was a potential future of his and it's it's heavy, dude. It's really good. And it's funny because it didn't affect everybody, right? Like, why did it affect Patrick Swayze? And yet, like, the potential girlfriend and the sister were just standing there at the end, having never actually met, just looking at it like, what the hell is this? I thought it was really, really weird. And I really have to watch it, like, three times to, like, figure out, like, what kind of bizarre reverberating effects were happening from this time travel adventure. Yeah. My cult classic was probably the first movie that I fell in love with as a teenager, and that was The Lost Boys. Oh, yeah. uh, I, the soundtrack was incredible. I can remember having it on vinyl and cassette. You know, Echo and the Bunny Man and a bunch of a bunch of other bands. Uh, it was just terrific. And then when it got released on VHS, eventually finding that that VHS used for cheap because. VHS tapes were incredibly expensive when they first came out yeah. and like watching it so much that I, I learned the film and, and was able to quote the, quote the characters as they, as they were speaking. And, and the cool thing I found about, or that I still find about the lost boys now is that people turn back to it. Like the, the guy on the saxophone, people still, you know, yeah. I'll say like, I still, I still believe. believe like, yeah. and, and there's other moments too that, you know, the grandfather and, like there, there's just so many, I thought great moments in that film. Like it really played into the uh, whole Generation X being young at that point and coming of age. And Frog Kiefer, Brothers. Yeah, Kiefer yeah. Sutherland was so good as a villain as David in that film. Yeah. And then uh, the rest of the, of the vampires and stuff and figuring out. Oh, they call themselves the Lost Boys because they won't grow old. They're like Peter Pan's uh, yeah. crew. And uh, yeah, it. I just thought it was so good, at that, and it introduced me to Joel Schumacher then, and I followed his career ever after that film. But yeah, like for me, it's The Lost Boys, and to a lesser degree, the first Friday the Thirteenth. That whole mm. putting Kevin Bacon in on on the, on the silver screen for the first time, and yeah. I can remember going to a midnight showing of, of Friday the Thirteenth in downtown Toronto at a classic old movie theater. And it had a balcony and like a gigantic screen, like one of these ones from the 50s and the 60s that was just kind of holding on by a thread. So they always had these B movie midnight uh, midnight screenings, and uh, being on on the, the lower level watching the big love scene with Kevin Bacon and whatever the young actress's name was during Friday the 13th, and someone screaming from the balcony above. Give her the bacon, bacon. I'll never forget that moment for the rest of my life. My buddies and I still make that quote every so often. Give her the bacon, bacon. And that's why, like, I whenever Friday the 13th is on, the very first one, the, the Ari Lehman uh, jump out of yeah. the pond uh, moment. It, that film it, is it an just, absolute classic. Probably yeah. in, in my top five favorite movies. And, uh, Maybe yeah, top so that, three. That, I love that's it. One of, 
it, that's why it's like my my one B of uh, mm. favorite cult movies. Well, Chris, Tony. Chris, if I get a chance uh, backstage, I'll tell you about my story when we went and watched Friday the Thirteenth the remake at the theaters. Uh, I don't think I can say it live because I might get in trouble, but it was a funny little story that I got a kick out of. Uh, but you, we were talking about the Lost Boys being comic collectors. Does anybody ever? want to just object to the Frog Brothers when they're starting to talk about that particular Batman issue and saying there's only so many copies, and you're like, that's not really true. <laughs> Read this. Yeah. Listen, they were grasping at straws. They were like, it's a comic book store. We'll write a scene. <laughs> hey, you know, the, fun, the funny thing is, if you want to spend $100, the two books they show about the vampires, somebody actually made actual comics of those for uh, as the props. Wow. Yeah. But I've seen them on eBay for a hundred bucks. I've thought about picking them up just because. I mean, it is a Stone Cold classic as well. The Lost Boys is a wonderful film. Oh, yeah. I, I can watch that any. Day. I gotta be honest. It was. It didn't occur to me as a as a cult classic because in my childhood it was so wildly popular. You know, and I just never deemed things. I, I just it, initially I had not deemed things that were wildly popular as cult classics because I was like, no. I would sort of say it's on like the fringe because like it is put out by Warner Brothers, so it is like it's got major studio backing. But at the same time, it is a horror movie about vampires, so you know. But, but like it, uh, but apparent like looking back, it didn't do gangbusters. Yeah. But based on where I lived. Like you wouldn't have known because everyone saw that movie. <laughs> like, you know, parents, teenagers, ch yeah. young children, everyone wants to go see that movie. Yeah, it was uh, it was rated R restricted here in Ontario when it was released. So I got to see it at a drive-in by sneaking in, you know, in, in a car to to see that. And that was the only way I got to see it. And then just remember thinking this movie's so dark because seeing dark movies at a drive-in. Doesn't necessarily always work out well, but yeah. But I remember the the soundtrack and then that final battle, and obviously the grandfather was so good in that too. But yeah, the final battle was so great. I loved, I loved the turnabout. I loved the the genuine shock and dismay from the mom. Like I, it is one of my for of movies from my childhood. It's one of my favorite endings. Just because, like, I at that point in my life, I just didn't see any of that coming. So, does anybody got anything they want to show off as far as movies? Because I've got a stack, but I'm gonna wait till the last. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a bunch of stuff. Whatever right. you want to, I got a small stack. All right, uh, deviate. What would deviate? Deviate. You want to go first? Or we'll let yeah, Rich? yeah. Whatever. Was it Rich? Was you the one that said that? No, it wasn't me. Remy, <laughs> let the Mal go first. Let the Mal go first. Yeah, right. yeah. Why not? Let the Mal go first. Ooh, go. the original My Bloody Valentine. It's, pro it's yeah. one of my favorite slasher movies. Um, didn't it didn't do great, but didn't like people have seen this movie. It's not like it's an, an a completely unseen movie, but it was pretty heavily edited. It's from Canada. And the the MPAA uh, cut a bunch of stuff out, and unfortunately, the uh, the uncut footage that's available is just like sort of VHS -y quality. But it is now all in it, and it is a much better film with those trims put in. So I, I recommend trying to seek it out if you're you've seen the old version because it's awesome. Because you know who doesn't love a mask miner just using a pickaxe the way a pickaxe should be. In caving people's heads in and stuff like <laughs> yeah it's very very cool highly recommend that one let's have a look here this one's a little bit underseen um writing wrongs with uh cynthia rothrock and yun biao it's one of cynthia rothrock's um martial arts films that she made in hong kong and it, it's really good it's it's got Great action sequences, loads and loads of epic violence, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, I think it's quite underseen, in my opinion, com compared to other films that are similar to it, like, like Police Story, for instance. Everybody's seen Police Story. Awesome film as well, don't get me wrong. But yeah, that's worth seeking out. Now, is this a cult film? 
not really sure, just because I like it. I don't know whether there's much of a following for it. Not 100% there. But hey, I thought I'd bring it up. Tales from the Hood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, a cracking movie. Um, the sequel, not so much. But the, the first one, highly recommend that. It's an anthology horror film with all... all African American cast and director. It's it's very very cool. I highly recommend it. I didn't see this until like a year or so ago as well. I I'd always heard about it, but very very cool. Now we go to Ninja Three: The Domination. Oh, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Wow. This is dope. Oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> All about the ninja. This is a tremendous film that everybody should seek out. If you're a fan of A, ninjas, B, 80s hair, and C, sort of demonic possession movies, which isn't the kind of thing that you put with a ninja normally. No. But, yeah. you know. Dudikoff is not in that one, is he? No. Uh, he's no a, he's I, a... I know he's an American ninja and stuff, yeah. but. Yeah. No, th no, he's not. Who, who's in this one? Shokazuki. Yeah, Shokazaki. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Lucinda Dickey. That's it. She's the but the lead, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's the lady. That's so, very cool. From the um, break, break movies. Yes. Now, this is a, a bit of a tomb. I have to come Ooh. back a bit to fit this in. This is the complete box set of Herschel Gordon Lewis movies. Um, it is absolutely huge as a an actual annual book in it inside it. Wow, but very cool. But like, I, I don't know whether you're familiar with Herschel's films. They're super low budget from like the fifties through till seventies, and um, yeah, they're awesome double features and stuff like that. I can't even see the camera; it's so big. Oh, that's she devils on wheels. <laughs> yeah, loads of crazy movies. Um, the most famous is probably um, oh, the Wizard of Gore. Yeah, Wizard of Gore is pretty famous. Um, it's actually one of the better films as well. If they Wizard, are not Wizard of Gore is so freaking bizarre for me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they all are. They're they're, they're mental movies. Some you of know, them are like... terrible. Well, no, be because sense. like, wiz like straight up, Wizard of Gore. The ending is it was like it was we who fooled you, the illusionist, all along. And it's like, what? Really? Is this what's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, how did you out illusion the evil illusionist? When did you have time? <laughs> Blood Feast. That's probably his like biggest movie. I would say no, they cool. um they're sort of notorious for being the first sort of splatter movies. So they're not like slasher films so much as just like ridiculous amounts of gore in sequences. And uh, some of them are good. Some of them are terrible. 2000 Maniacs. That, that's that's one of the better ones. I highly recommend that one. Um, it that's really powerful. depends on your tolerance for super low budget films. But I always like looking at them because they're obviously shot on, on such a low budget in communities that didn't normally have film crews around and you could see sort of all the countryside and all the houses and how they were it's like a little time capsule which is really fascinating that you don't get um in in your hollywood blockbuster and of course you've got your big book here let's make sure there's nothing too rude or anything but like it's pretty cool this is a cool box set it's worth checking out um then <clears throat> This is one of my absolute favorite cult movies. Don't know whether you guys are familiar with it, but with Nell and I, it's a comedy, it's a UK comedy, and it's really well known over here, but not successful, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't when it came out, but it's hilarious and also quite touching and deep. Um, the It's about two alcoholics, basically. And they're, they're like starving actors, well, they're pretending to be whilst they're just drinking their lives away. And they go on holiday. 
and it's uh, it's really funny, but really bleak and sort of British. So I like I highly recommend this if you haven't seen it. This is the uh, super limited edition version with which is like numbered and stuff like that. And it's got a huge book in it. DBH, I legit thought you were going to break out the first 25 seasons of Neighbors, but that's all right now. I, I, have, I have several box sets if you want me to dig them out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is this is like an absolute epic book. It's huge. But listen, there's your disc in, in there, which is a really weird thing to have in a book. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend it. Um, it's... Yeah. Arrow put this out, so you should be able to get it quite easily, I would think. And of course, the best cult movie and movie of all time. Yes, Creed Two. Two. <laughs> this is the best movie of all time. I'm telling you, I love this film. It's it's hilarious. It's it's a musical, and I have a lot of song in my heart. You just um, need to have a sealed copy you're holding in your hand. Yeah, it's because I've got another copy over there. Okay. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, Michelle I've, Pfeiffer, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, it was Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Much better than Greece, if you ask me. Nobody did, but it's fine. Yeah, this is <laughs> your book version. And I've never, yeah, I've never cracked it open, but I also have a digital version on Amazon, so there's no point. And another few. I mean, I could do this all day because there are literally tons, but I'll just be boring the <laughs> hell out of you. So let's just draw the line there. Well, uh, uh, Bon, no, bon, bon Jam says that you're a national treasure. You're an international <laughs> treasure, <laughs> Doctor. International Doctor. treasure. International treasure. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. But... Well, anybody got some movies they want to show off? Or... Yeah, I, got, I grabbed a couple movies. All right. What you got, Remy? Uh... Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, I love that movie. Yes. Uh, and this was one that instantly I was like, I'm going to hate this. And then somebody was like, no, you got to watch this, bro. <laughs> and so it was like, once I watched it, I was like, yeah, I get it now. And then you got to watch it again to figure out like all the little stuff that they throw in there. Uh, I grabbed this one because I thought this was a good cult classic. Dogma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yep. like that is that's nice. really hard to get now as well. I was say, it's, yeah, it's like yeah, really it. <laughs> so it's like, uh, Galaxy Quest. Let's go! Oh, yes. Fantastic awesome. film. Again, it's like one of those hilarious <laughs> things that it just Sam Rockwell. You get it, but it yes. it's Sam Rockwell. It's like, guy. My name's Guy. I don't even have a name. <laughs> <laughs> We do have a name. Do I? <laughs> uh, I have nothing but trouble. Let's go. Dick I thing. love that movie. Yeah, it's another one that I, I think is, uh, again, kind of John a, Candy, baby. And uh, I included Mothman Prophecies. Uh, Richard another really good creepy movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that movie, that movie hate, made me hate bridges for a long time. Oh my god! <laughs> Clockwork Orange. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, this is another one that, like, I had heard a lot about and never really watched it, and then went back and. It's notorious it. over here because it was Stanley Kubrick refused to release it because the BBFC wanted to cut it, so we never got it over here until he died. Uh, by which point. It was released uncut, but yeah. So I have uh, seen it now. But. The Sandlot. Oh yeah, yeah this is uh, like a just a, a great childhood movie that I, you talk about like quotes and everything. It's uh, everybody's seen. Uh, I've got a couple on the. Um, I'd like to consider an almost list. Uh, we have. Stay tuned. Oh, I love uh, that movie. Yeah, with John Ritter in it. This was a really good movie. It's about some people that get sucked into uh, the TV realm of hell. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I included Milo and Otis. Oh, yeah. 
this was a big kids film for me, and I didn't know this, but apparently it was a Japanese movie originally, and like a huge movie over there that they had. That John uh, Ritter movie was great. Like I can remember, like they flipped the channel to the David Dukes of Hazard and stuff like that. Was, yeah, like this. Stay tuned was incredible. Yeah, was I'm like, glad you. Yeah. I totally forgot about that movie, man. That's yeah. Great. It was like they would like flip the channel and then they're yeah. like northern overexposure and they're like freezing <laughs> to death outside and like yes. you know like all these all these little quirky things i'm putting it on my watch list i've, I've never seen it that's oh, you'll amazing. love it DVD. it is you'll really good yeah. john ritter was great in that movie uh i've got the uh pippy long stockings oh, oh i loved that as a cool. kid yeah i was obsessed with that movie when i was really young yeah that was with like awesome. grease up the shoes and everything that's right. Uh, and then this right, one Louis. I had to throw in uh, Breakfast Club. There you uh, go. Fantastic 80s movie. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. So. Chris, did you just dead melt on us just then? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so before I start, does anybody else got some flicks they want to show off? Or? No. I wish I had my stuff. I just want to say shout out to Heather's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Heather's is a good one. Heather's, uh, Heather, Heather's was my true first cult classic. I watched that movie, and people were like, "What are you watching?" I'm like, "It's this movie called Heather's." Christian Slater's in it, and you know, and people are just like, uh, "Like no one, no one in my household was like, what is he doing?'" And they're like, "Why does he hey, can't watch it?" Because up until Heather's, I watched Superman over and over and over, Superman 1, 2, and 3, over and over and over. And then all of a sudden, I was watching Heather's. And in retrospect, that should have been the clue that I was a big old gay. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was good show. From a muscled man to teenage angst that were killing people. Yeah. Time yeah. Storm. And, oh, my God. All the whole all thing of a sudden, you realize. And yeah. making it look like it was a gay love suicide? Come all on. The, all of a sudden, he knew why he liked Superman. Oh, wow. No, and, and you know that's really messed up because it was never sexual when it comes to Superman. Oh, no. I would have to add to the uh, conversation though because we haven't had any like uh, good action movies, but Starship Troopers has got to yes. be like the best cult action flick out there ever, right? Yeah, uh, one the first, of them, and first only action, the first one. Well, first name, action name movie it. I fell in love with was Showdown in Little Tokyo. Yes. Oh, yeah, Lundgren yeah, yeah. and Brandon Lee, Lundgren, yeah. where they jump over the car. Yes. Yeah. And my other favorite cult classic, which is much more action oriented, John Carter of Mars. Yeah. Is that cult classic status now? Unfortunately. Uh, that's the I best. Maybe it did so poorly that yeah, like it I love that movie, man. Yeah, it bombed so hard. And I remember objecting to see it, and my friend is like, "Nope, we're going to see it because it's my birthday," and I was like. You, you may regret this, dude. Every review is terrible. And when we left the theater, I was like, I'm like, burn the reviewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that scene when they come back from like the temple and everything and all the uh, the war armies on him and he sends Deja Thoris down the river and he stays behind pretty much, you know. Yep. And he just like flashbacks to finding his wife and just goes absolutely ham. And his dog is out there with him on the battlefield just – mountains of bodies i'm like like my brain was exploding seeing that him just fly through the air and just pile them up and fly Dude, through the I'm air i'm so sad because that was finally a movie where he was the lead where i thought was like oh my god this should be his big break and it was no it was his big it did, it did savages battleship and john carter of mars all in the same year and none that of them poor pulled him over. and he was gambit mm. too wasn't he yeah, but that was well before then. That was like but well my, before my point is, is they kept trying to make him happen, yeah. and then they kept trying to sink his battleship nonstop. Battleship was absolutely amazing too. Like, I think if you see that movie, you love. I that coastline movie. that; it's great. Yeah, oh, there's, there's loads nothing, of there's nothing bad about it. Yeah, and yeah. again, it just it's one of the most patriotic movies I've ever seen. It, it shouldn't be good. <laughs> but it's loads of fun. Like the bad guys are literally shooting the little game pegs into boats, and they sink in and blow up. But when they get when they get old miss out, they like drop an anchor and the the old the old actual real life vets are on there like ain't no way they're sinking this battleship. Wait, are we about to bomb Honolulu? Oh, someone done kicked the fucking donkey. <laughs> 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 the real life vets are like the best part. It was so cool. Damn. 
Yeah, he well, loves Gambit. <laughs> Come on then, Tony. Show us what you got. Uh, well, before I get started, I'm going to start with a movie that it's one of my favorite childhood movies growing up. However, I do not own a physical nor digital copy that I need to get. And it's a movie that came out in the 80s called Gotcha, starring Anthony Edwards. And I can't think of the guy's name, but he played, uh, he was in Nightmare on M Street. He was the kid that got killed in the jail cell. He was in it. And uh, Linda Florentino. I'm going to play a clip because every time I think of Gotcha, they go on a class field trip. He gets embroiled into a, like a spy drama with Linda Florentino. He ends up in East Germany, goes through hell, finally makes it to the checkpoint, goes through a strip search, and when he finally gets to the U.S. border or the West German border, he is- Hey, how you doing? Am I in West Berlin now? Sure. Fuck you! Good night. I've been wanting to do that for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. But that's a really great movie to watch. Uh, you know, young Anthony Edwards. Back then, everybody knew him as uh, in Revenge of the Nerds, but, you know, that was good. So I'm going to start off with my Blu-rays. I got a couple stacks of DVDs. I hope I don't bore everybody. And some of these may not be cult status, but they are just mean something to me. Uh, before so you begin, sh- yes, shout sir. out to Ronnie James Dio, man. That's a great shirt. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, so we're going to start off with Army of Darkness. Let me ask evil, you a question. Evil, when okay, is it okay to show a 13 year old girl Army of Darkness? Because uh, I haven't seen it in ages. I really, really want to show it to her when she's awesome. six. Yeah, I'm going to say I was 13 when I saw Army of Darkness. By the way, that, I am that's so, what I'm thinking. I'm so confused about Army of Darkness being on the list. Because the Evil Dead movies were truly, truly, well, truly out there. In, in all fairness, I don't have a copy of the first Evil Dead on physical. Otherwise, I'd have showed it too. But um, I love Army of Darkness. <laughs> I could quote this one all day long. But Evil Dead gets a, 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 is the first choice. It's the best as far as I love that movie. It's wonderful. And to answer your question, DVH, show her this when you're ready to answer a lot of questions. <laughs> 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 good answer and then we got stephen king's cats i i love this movie i saw this wow. when i was a kid just the adventures of this cat the thing about the dude trying to quit smoking still gets me every time the guy trying to walk the ledge and that troll at the end yeah that wouldn't that wouldn't cgi that was this badass it's goddamn real troll hell yeah <laughs> of course we're going to style we're going to talk about cult classics so let's uh yeah now let's go I Last love that movie. movie. Great like, soundtrack. It doesn't get enough well, love. Everybody. Uh, no, it don't. Yeah. And uh, was it heavily referenced in Ted? Don't he show up in Ted? Yeah, yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Ted. Twice. Twice. <laughs> now, this one is a personal favorite of mine. I never thought, I never knew they released it on Blu ray. And this is a movie that came out in 88 or 89. It's called Spellbinder, starring Kelly Preston, uh, MC Ganey. Uh, Paul, or is it Paul, no, Rick Rosovich from Top Gun and Tim Daly from Wings. This is a nice, tender love story about a guy that saves a girl from being accosted by her boyfriend, takes her home, you know, being nice. They end up becoming a couple, and then he finds out she's a witch from a devil's covenant, and they're trying to kill her. They're trying to get her back. So, you know, <laughs> it's got some, it's a nice little B movie. And <laughs> the ending, we, we all I will not. I will not spoil the ending, but it, the ending will throw you for a loop. Oh, and I never can't think of his name, but the guy that plays Shang Tsung in the first Mortal Kombat movie makes Kara a cameo. Tagawa. At, at, what is it? Kara Tagawa. But he, he makes a cameo appearance as a Inspector Lee as a cop. It's pretty cool. Shout out to Chris who mentioned The Lost Boys, and I love The Lost Boys, but I love this movie as much as I love The Lost Boys, and that is Near Dark. Oh, yes, sir. My buddy Tim loves this movie. This is one of his favorite films of all time. And thanks to him, I got this copy. And after mentioned, when Deviate showed Ninja 3, we've got Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, and Ninja 3 The Domination. And before I get to the DVDs, closing out the Blu-rays, we've got Vampire Hunter D. This was one of the first animes 
that I've seen in the 80s. And it's still I love Bla Bla yeah. Bloodlust. I think Bloodlust yeah. is amazing animation. It's got fantastic artwork in it. But I love, I love, I've always loved Vampire Hunter D. It has a big place in my heart. Now moving to DVDs. American Ninja. Classic. Gotta throw that in there. And another anime that I love just as much as Vampire Hunter D. Oh. I mean, is that a cult classic? That one's really on the fridge because that's like universally loved. I just, I guess it is cult classic because it's... Well, it started Japanese. out as a cult classic. I yeah, believe. true. It, now, is, Mike, is Michael Dudikoff still alive? Does anyone know? Yeah, as far as I know, he's still alive. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, I don't know if this one's got a cult status or not. I just think it's cool. This is probably the only foreign film I have. And that is Battle Royale. If classic. anybody's never right. seen it. Hunger Games. Yep. Uh, it's that good. Like, never this seen is, it. Really? I know what, at one oh, point in time, Quentin was... Tarantino said this was one of his favorite plays. But... What, watch the theatrical cut. Don't watch the director's cut. But it's, yeah. it's really good. Really, really good. Yeah, it, this, this is really is, great. Uh, is it is it Japanese or or something? Yeah. Well, there's a North American version out now where where it has a English dub, but basically it's, it's a Japanese movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a stuff. Japanese movie. You got this government. It, it takes place in the future where the government became fearful of the kids for some reason, and they take this ninth grade class, put them on an island, and give them weapons and tell them they got three days to kill each other. They put collars on them. That if they don't kill each other within three days, then they'll blow, they'll blow up. Takeshi Kitano in that is chilling. He's amazing. Um, He's what was the girl's actor. the girl's name that uh, the, I can't think I can't her name, remember off the top of my head. But, uh, but I know who you mean. The um, the girl in the yellow suit that ends up playing Go Go Yo Yo is it Go Go Yabari and Kill Bill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And another classic, I can watch this movie a hundred times. I used to love it. It's an all-star cast. Now I morbidly watch it to see how many of them are still alive. And that is the Cannonball Run. Yeah. And part two. And with me showing the Cannonball Run, I got, of course, play another video. It's hard to understand you. When I called you, I was doing 140 miles an hour. That was six Lamburgers, four shish kebabs, a side order of couscous, and two milk. <laughs> But I love Cannonball Run and Cannonball Run 2. I've always been told there's a three. Apparently it was Speed Zone or something like that, but I don't have that one. All-Star cast. I know Jackie, Jackie Chan's still alive, but I don't know how many. There's a lot of people that are in these movies that are deceased now. But it's pretty cool. It was only Jackie's birthday the other day. I think he was 78. Really? I think so. Yeah. Got Clerks. I love this movie. It's still one of my, I still watch this movie all the time. I've not still not seen Clerks three yet. I need to watch oh, it. Clerks is wonderful. It's a, you can watch that. It's so quotable as well. There's just the jokes don't die. They're, they're well, wonderful. Watching Clerks two growing up in the eighties, I love Samantha Fox. I had her posters everywhere, and the last part of that ruined that song for me. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Another cult classic is The Crow. And one of my favorite Kurt Russell movies of all time, Escape from New York. Brilliant. And I watched this movie in high school. My, my aunt was a our teacher. She played it all the time. This has got Rutger Hauer in it. It's called Escape from Sobibor. It's supposed to be about the true life escape from the concentration camp Sobibor during World War II. I think that's got a different name here. I'm going to have to look it up because I, I know that cover. Hang on. But I've never, that, never heard of this one either. Oh, you you would like you would you might like it, Chris. It's pretty. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's pretty brutal. They uh, there's a scene in there where they so some of them try to escape and they get caught, and the punishment is just yeah. Let's just say and, it's brutal. Growing up, my mom was a big Rucker Hauer film so it, or film fan, so it didn't matter if it was like hardcore or or nudity that kind of stuff. She she would play it, and I would watch. But yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that one. Yeah, that was the only reason why I knew about it was because uh, I'm still trying to track down there. She played an Anastasia movie that where this girl come back claiming to be Anastasia, but you know, she was as, trying to as we're on Rutger Hauer, we shouldn't let this pass. The Hitcher 
is oh yeah one oh, of the all-time yeah. great oh, good. performances oh yeah and it's a wonderful film and Which, i would have showed that if i'd have had i'm <laughs> desperate for it to come out on blu-ray it's it's coming in the next year just so you know, but it's been out of print forever i still right. can't believe he ripped her in half yeah, yeah. yeah. oh my god some more classics killer clowns from outer space yeah gotta love it well you don't have to love it like i said i failed to mention this in the clips but we got the last dragon yes show enough okay now we're going to get into some independent little independent stuff and that is puppet master i love these little puppet master films i got this at the dollar store for pretty cheap it's got the first nine and i think i've made it through the first five so i'm still working on it but puppet master has always been one of my favorite they do you know, progressively get harder to watch but yeah, yeah i'm with you i love the puppet master movies now this is i'm going to go on record now saying this is my favorite childhood movie of all time that is not a box office smash Y'all have heard me talk about it. You even seen it in the intro of the clip, and that is rad. Yeah. Oh. Story of a BMX a kid, a kid, a freestyle BMX rider. He, you know, Hell Track comes to his hometown. He races, and he shows him what he's got. It. This actually had like mongoose. You know, at the time, mongoose was big in the eighties. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get the guy wrong, but I believe his name is Eddie Fiola. He's a, he plays in the movie. And this was loosely based on his life, Eddie Fiola's life. And uh, it's just a movie that I love watching again and again. I got this copy on DVD a long time ago. And now here it's on Blu-ray. Of course, you can see I got the poster. Love it. I'm going to get me a Rad Racing t-shirt. I've seen them on Amazon. I got to get one. You should definitely get the Blu-ray. It's, it's had a 4K restoration, so it's, it's definitely yeah. worth watching. I hope you but, pull a Gleam in the Cube next if you got Rad in your hand. Dude, I don't... <laughs> Gleam in the Clue, Gleam in the Cube is one of my book, uh, movies I am so looking for. That one. And it's really odd when I find somebody that actually knows what I'm talking about when I mention Gleam in the Cube. That, yeah. and, thra that and Thrashing. Yeah. Thr <laughs> yes. Thrashing. <laughs> yeah. And Brian said he wanted a mongoose bike when he was a kid. He got a huffy. I wanted a mongoose as well. Next cult classic. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. I watched it every year on Halloween. Love it. <laughs> I love that movie. It's loads of fun. It, it's, it's how I want my life to be, <laughs> which is really messed up when you think about it, but it's just wonderfully fun. I absolutely did not care for the remake, but I love this one. That's a remake? I didn't no. know that either. No, 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 no. This is based off the original Broadway play. This is the original. They had a remake that came out a few years ago they played on television. Yeah, with Laverne Cox. I couldn't tell you anybody that was in it. Now, of course, I want to bring up a Chuck Norris flick. And I brought up a horror flick. Hang on, hang on. We can't move past this. It Was it a stage, stage show that they just put out? Or was that an actual remake of Rocky Horror? It was an actual remake. Yeah, it was. It was done as a live production because, like, Fox did several right, Fox Television yeah. over here did several live shows. I this know was what you one mean. of them. Yeah. Um, he, um, um, what? Oh my God, Tim Curry does appear in it for a moment. Yeah. Um, and Laverne Cox plays, uh, Doctor Franken. Doctor Franken um, so like, and Laverne on the first day, first day of filming, Laverne, you know, or preparing whatever, Laverne Cox met Tim Curry, and Tim Curry's like, You don't have to worry about it. It's your this is your role, it's your turn. You bring to it whatever you can. And Laverne Cox is like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not super great, but I okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, like I said, I, I wanted to show a Chuck Norris flick, and this is a, a one of the only horror movies I know he did. It's one of my all-time favorites, and that is Silent Rage. Oh, my. This movie is really awesome. It's about a, I guess these scientists do something to this guy that can't he can't die. He was a homicidal maniac to begin with when they thought they killed him, and then they reanimated him, and Chuck's got to save the day. Is that where he and fights the, by the the well at the end? And yeah, kicks yeah, yeah, the yeah yep. it is. I, remember, I just don't remember the VHS cover for that. It was way cooler. I, I yeah. love that movie. 
a lot of slasher movie fans don't like it. They think it's a bit slow, but I, I love it. But then I'm a Chuck Norris fan as well. So it's. Well, I was going to say, I, I, was I, don't, I don't have it, but my favorite Chuck Norris film of all time is Long Wolf McQuaid. Oh, it's a great movie. You should get that on Blu ray. Yeah, it looks, it's looks fantastic. Down down the Octagon for me. Yeah. Uh, the Octagon. No, I, I do have the. I do have the Octagon. Yeah, that, so, yeah, that, that's great. My everyone's favorite Chuck Norris movie was Delta Force. Delta, Delta Force, Force is really Force good, but yeah. I, yeah. I can't Long that Quaid, he, 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 like, he, he drinks know. beer no matter what he's doing all the way through the film, uh, <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 I don't drink and drive, and he's <laughs> pounding beers whilst yeah. driving the thing. The guy's a legend. Yeah. Okay. Movie. <laughs> Santa Claus goes to the mall to sit on Chuck Norris's knee. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the next one I'm going to show. What this I do during the Christmas season is none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> the next movie I'm going to show out came out, I think it was in the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't really remember when it came out. But it was based off a Twisted Sister song from the 80s. And this is Dee Snyder's Strangeland. Uh, and this yeah, is very graphic and very gory. Yep. And you know, it's funny because when the, uh, in the late or the early 2000s, I had a problem. We had a problem with uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter and my niece, you know, getting online in these chats and sharing all their information with everybody. And was trying to figure out a way to make, you know, warn them that, you know, there's freaks out there that will take advantage of them. So Tony, being Tony, decided to let them watch this movie as a lesson. And no. they never, they, they, they quit. Sorry. Oh. And granted, they would because I never, I never saw it. I remember it being in all the uh, um, horror mags at the time. I like it. it yeah. it's a little slow, but um, and he goes through the whole thing. He's going through doing all this torture and stuff, and you're like, man, they need to hang this guy out to dry. Yeah. And then the 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 last half of the movie, he's on his medicine and stuff, and they parole him. And the mob, uh, a mob of angry people come after him, and you're kind of rooting for him a little bit at the end. But it's kind of, I think you'd like it, DVH. I think you would. Yeah, I'll give it a go. That Sounds that like came out the same at the, around the same time that the original Cube came out, and I invited a friend over. It was a female friend, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you got to see this movie, The Cube. It's really creepy." And she was, she brought that, and then I <laughs> felt like an idiot because I was like, "All right, you win." <laughs> like I didn't. To be fair, the cube is good though. You you weren't yeah. wrong. Oh, yeah. That's it's a cool movie. Still, that would Animal. be that would be great done if it was remade today with today's CGI and technology. Yeah, the cube. Have you seen? There's a French movie on Netflix. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's basically just like the cube, except it's like a prison that is like a floating platform. Yeah, and they they, called, they uh, feed from the top down. Yeah, it's called uh, the the platform. I think it's, it's called the platform. Called the yeah, platform. I think you're right. <laughs> and it lowers, and each yeah. level that you're on, like when you're on the first level, it's filled with all this food and wine and desserts and everything. And then as it gets lower, people like eat as much as they can, and it's. It's like supposed to be a message about how people gorge too much, and like if everybody just ate a little bit, then it, by the time it got to the bottom, you'd be good. But you get to these lower levels, and these people are starving, and they start going crazy. It's it's really wild. I got three three left, and then I, I want to show off my subspecies box set. Subspecies. This is this is the first oh, wow. three, and to be honest, I've watched maybe the first two. But, I've only uh, seen the first one, so. I, and I don't remember it well enough to watch it again as well. Like, I, all I know is, is it worth watching? Like, I, I think if you like Puppet Master, you like it. I mean, these two girls yeah. show up in Romania and um, at Dracula's castle, and then you got these two vampires fighting over them. Rad dude's pretty cool. And the subspecies, which I don't know if you can, I can spring them up on here, is actually just the little fellas that's holding the body. I mean. <laughs> So, I mean, and that's a really awesome cover. I always love that cover. I know they have the first one on Blu-ray DVH, but I don't know if, about any of the others. I yeah, I've got a, I've got the first one on Blu-ray. I'm not sure about the other ones. I think there's four or five of them now. Mm. Okay, last two. These are two of my favorite cult films, and the cover for this one is very misleading. Trick or Treat from 1986 starring 
It says, says a story in Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne, even though they have very little screen time. But it has Tony Fields and Sammy Kerr. It's got uh, – I can't never think of the guy's name. Uh, let me see if I look. Mark Price, he played Skippy on Family Ties. He's the rag man. He's the hero. This is basically just an 80s horror film about a guy. He idolizes his hometown hero. He's a rock star named Sammy Kerr. Sammy dies in a hotel fire. Gene Simmons, who plays the DJ, gives him an acetate vinyl of his last record that had never been released. And he plays it backwards and he re resurrects the dead rock star. And the dead rock star decides he's going to kill everybody. Hmm. So it's a cheesy little B movie. It's got an awesome soundtrack by Fast Fastway. And um, this is another one I watch every year around Halloween. And I wish it had, honestly, I wish it had. That cover, oh. because that's the better cover. And but you know, I just seen it at Walmart, and just as soon as I grabbed it, it went out of print again. And the last movie one I'm going to show is another one I picked up at Walmart when I worked there a long time ago, and I haven't seen it since. And that is the Wraith. Mm, nice. This is probably easily my favorite Charlie Sheen movie ever. And. It's about a guy that gets murdered, comes back with a very badass car. You've seen it in the clips, and he's getting revenge. It also stars Randy Quaid, and I know there's some other people I'm probably forgetting, but this is probably easily a very awesome movie. It's one of my favorites. And that's now, was me. it based on Charlie Sheen's life? No, <laughs> <laughs> his Maybe. driving habits. He has driving yeah. habits, or was it art <laughs> imitating life? <laughs> Oh. I, I think everybody growing up when we watched the race, we wanted that car. I mean, that and the car from the Road Warrior, the Interceptor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But y'all, that's that's what I got. Um, I feel the need uh, to mention uh, Peter Jackson's horror movies because they come out on Blu-ray. They're amazing. Yeah. And uh, Bad Taste, particularly, yeah. is one of my favorite movies. Monkey I've Radio so Baby. Or Zombie Hi. Radio Baby. What was the Michael G. Fox one? Uh, the Frighteners. The Frighteners. Oh, yeah, The Frighteners. The Frighteners. Yeah. Uh, Brain Dead, aka Dead Alive, is the Zombie Radio one of the Baby. Best, yeah, it's one of the best zombie movies you'll ever see. The pudding the scene, bad taste the lawnmower scene. Yeah, yeah. Lawnmower was the best. That's the best part about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I kick ass for the Lord. And he's going through <laughs> kicking yes. It's amazing. Yeah. He's just uh, kicking out the legs. Yeah. That's God. Sweeping the legs. That was awesome. <laughs> also, Re Reanimator, whilst we're on the subject of uh, oh, yeah. zombie flicks, Reanimator's amazing, as are the sequels. I mean, there's we could do this all day. There's yeah, no I was gonna say we could. Movies. Hell, we could do a segment just on horror movies alone. I mean, <laughs> Christmas horror movies. Yeah, I love Christmas horror movies. They're wonderful. Black. I Christmas love Black movie. Christmas. Yes. Black Christmas. <laughs> Black Christmas is one of the greatest horror movies. Period. Let alone yeah. horror. Movies. And it is a gift to the world. <laughs> it, it's it's wonderful. Bob Bob Clark was a wonderful director. He really knew his stuff. Oh, you mean yeah. Canada's gift to the world wasn't the movie Millennium? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That you know, shit for, can't even achieve cult cult classic status. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. The movie had Margot Kidder as a kid in it. Like, that was, oh yeah, yeah. that's good. Don't you drag her good name into this? Listen, no, she's Canadian too. I know she was there as a favor. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim's favorite cult films is Highlander, Near Dark, and The Boondock Saints. I cannot forget. I re realize I forgot to mention The Boondock Saints. I haven't seen the Boondock Saints in years. I, I never saw the sequel either. Like, I've only I, watched I, the first one. Okay. That's okay. Like I, I want to, I want to see the original again. Like, it's got to be something of like twenty years probably since I last saw right. it. Aren't they, aren't they about to do another one? Yeah, with yeah. Sean Patrick Flannery and uh, Daryl. Yeah, yeah. He'll always be Daryl now. Yeah, now. <laughs> you, know, you know what's That's so it. funny? I got to meet the two of them and Darla before The Walking Dead happened. And it was just so 
casual and I didn't know how into comics what's her name was, you know, and now she's writing comics, you know, and I'm like, shit, Darla from Buffy Angels writing comic books. <laughs> but we were standing next to Dennis Calero and the three of them came over because it was the end of the show. And um, and they're just and they're just shit talking with us. But she's really interested in Dennis's artwork, and they're having this whole conversation. Anyhow, it was really good. It's a very flattering memory. <laughs> I was gonna say when I think of Daryl in The Walking Dead, first time I watched The Walking Dead, I went, "Did wasn't he in Blade 2? <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> but, well, guys, I, I I don't have anything Good. else. Played Scud. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember his name, and I couldn't think of it. Scud. Scud. All right, this is going to be controversial. All right. I think I think Highlander is only half a good movie. The like every one? everything from the tail end is not good. Are you talking about Full Metal Jacket? Highlander. No. But, yes. <laughs> everything I mean, after you, basic you, training you wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, it's not that it wasn't good, but it's like it's two movies. Yeah. You watch Full Metal Jacket, and after basic training, you can turn that thing off. You just watch a good movie. That's, that's yeah. good. I mean, you're not wrong, but I do like the uh, the second half, but it, it is the lesser of the two. Actually, right. sort of like um, Clockwork Orange is a bit like that as well. Like when he, when he's a bad guy, and when when he's a good guy, it sort of is a bit less interesting. Well, I was gonna say I go on record. I love. I love the Highlander films except for the source, but I actually appreciate the television series more than I do the movies. Yeah, I like the TV show a lot. Yeah. And it, like, and I'm I'm not really knocking Highlander because I do no. love it. It's just that like, I think that it sort of loses its way once the Kurgan turns out to be a bit of a goof rather than a proper yeah. bad guy. Like, yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, I always thought. I mean, I love Clancy Brown, but I think they should have. They could have. Yeah, I mean, they he's made him a, for him to be a, a Russian. From the, being that old, he should have been like a better established, like mastermind character than just a. I don't know. And he had some cool lines, but yeah. Still looking around to for, to stuff to talk about because there's loads of them. <laughs> well, would y'all consider Pulp Fiction a classic? Cult classic? Well, it's definitely a classic. I don't know about cult classic. Yeah, I'm gonna it, say I feel like huge. it's too popular to qualify. I yeah. think Destiny Turns on the Radio would be more of a cult classic. That yeah. I have no idea you know. what that is. I'm I'm going to put it to my list. Mm. Was, uh, uh oh, you DVH, DVH has a list. I got lists. I love lists. They're, they're amazing. So do I. Big fan of lists. <laughs> I'm not on a list, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't want to be on that list either. <laughs> You're going on a list. <laughs> All right. Well, well, what was it? I've forgotten it already. Destiny. Destiny turns on the radio. On the radio. There we go. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a list of my favorite cult classics, and that includes The Wicker Man, The, oh, Prin the Princess amazing. Pie. The remake or the original? The original. The, the original. Three. Come on. No, I'm um, a remake guy. Suspiria yeah. because the original. Oh my god. Oh yeah, of course. You know, Clue. Clue is freaking great. Great. Yeah, Clue is one of my favorite films and one of my favorite viewing experiences ever. What was I showed the it second to the one you said? Suspiria. Yeah. Suspiria. Suspiria. Yo, Suspiria is a vampire movie, and they filmed it in Italy, and it is fucking amazing. And they did a remake for Amazon, and it is shit. Like, how do you go from a movie where everything you film, everything was, like, so artistically done and dripping in dramatic scenery, and I then you, you film... were talking about the Shia LaBeouf movie where he's on house arrest. My bad. Oh, no, that's, that's great, too. That's like, um, is that Suburbia? That's Suburbia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. It's a really good little thriller. Yeah. It's a long wait to deliver that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, What's surprised number four? It said Cannibal Holocaust, but okay. Okay. Texas Chainsaw so, Massacre. I actually oh, own that, and I, I, I kept that one out. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibal Another Holocaust? Ultra Geist. Yeah, I, I kept that one out too. Oh, oh yeah, Cannibal Holocaust. Ultra Geist. 
Poultry Geist is one of my favorite films, legitimately. I love Poultry Geist. Poultry Geist. Yeah, poultry, poultry, poultry Geist. Poultry yeah. Geist. Poultry Night, Geist. Night of the Chicken Dead yeah. By, yeah. by Lloyd Kaufman. <laughs> yeah. Very, rare, very rare. Yeah, that was a gift. Yeah. I forgot about yeah. that movie. It's amazing. Holocaust, I've got the soundtrack and everything. Oh, I love it. And, and <laughs> judging from your face, yeah, man, I believe you. <laughs> I'm going to have to find it. i got to find and, it. And, and of course, the worst cult classic on my list, but I freaking love it. Harold and Maud. Mm. Okay. You want to talk about a May-December romance, Tyler? Jesus, don't you go watch it. You, you go watch you go watch Harold Bro. and Maud. Look, did you watch that? Did you did you of course I watched you me fell on the sword? What was that? You fell on the sword? Yeah, I mean I didn't hey I didn't have the disdain for it that you guys did, you know. But like I, well, uh, I I'm sorry, but listen, I I I hold you up here, Cliff. Yeah, so don't continue. And I got to tell you what you're about to say. <laughs> you're falling down. <laughs> I, I, I listen. I love you, but I'm telling you, you're about to go from here down to here. Real let here. me let There's me no assure you. Let me assure you. I'm not about to say it's a good film. Okay. 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 All right. so, you know, okay. I I was only gonna say. I was only going to say I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the attempts at what it was trying to do. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to bring up another flick. Um, and somebody also, else it gave something me else. Frontal, frontal male nudity, and you know that's always a plus plus in my book. <laughs> my buddy Tim brought this up. The Monster Squad. Monster oh, Squad. Monster Squad. Yeah. yeah, Wolfman's yep. got nards. Yeah. yeah, kick him in the nards. <laughs> and well. Well, Boar wants to know: Has anybody mentioned any Monty Python movies? We probably yeah, should. Have. Great. Holy Grail yeah. should have been on there. Yeah. The rest, yeah. Huh? yeah. Life of Brian's amazing. Life of Brian is amazing. Yes. I have never seen the Life of Brian. I have seen the Holy really? Grail. What? Yep. I've seen clips from the Life of Brian, but I've never watched it. Baby, wow. get on board. <laughs> I'll put that on my list. Uh, the one other horror movie I wanted to mention that's actually not really well known, so I don't even think it's got cult status, but it's the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Uh, I recommend oh, if you're yeah. into if you're into uh, like it's found footage, isn't found, it? yeah, found footage, but narration documentary type of movie. Uh, the Poughkeepsie Tapes is incredible, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, like DVA said, we could go all night talking about this. <laughs> But I'm gonna go ahead and wind it down. Um, we'll go around the horn and uh, we'll see who they pick first. Well, well, we'll pick somebody else. DVH, what you got coming up, man? I will have a video out on the internet, um, probably on Monday, and then probably on Friday, cool. and it will be rinse and repeating. Rinse and repeating. I, I probably won't be on next week. I'll I'll say that right now so we all know all right. but uh otherwise you can find me right here most of the time cool cliff what you got coming up brother um sunday nights council of comics box office news movie reviews this time it's the trilogy i chose which is the unbreakable trilogy so we're starting with unbreakable what? tomorrow night so is that the actual yeah. name of it like Dude, like, you don't know how, like, everyone's choosing trilogies, and I'm like, I need to choose a perfect trilogy. Yes. I need something that's going to torture these guys the way I was tortured, but I'm still going to enjoy it. <laughs> Dude, like, Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies ever. Any genre. It, it is, it is yeah. brilliant. Like, I really, I, I really do. Yeah. I really do enjoy it. So, like, we're doing Unbreakable tomorrow, and then the cons the following weeks will be uh, uh, Split and Glass. Um, Mondays, you know, we got new keys and hot comics and 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 now Stevensville is a permanent fixture on all of our on all of our live streams. So that is delightful. Um Wednesdays, we're now doing new comic book day live because we have issues. So for the time being, we're doing new comic book day live on Wednesday nights. Uh Brian announced this morning that Breakfast with Brian will be moving to Sundays. So starting May 4th, because I wanted to choose the busiest day of the year, I'm going to do a morning show on Saturdays. So when does everyone start stepping on everyone else's dicks? Immediately. You're going to Wednesdays and Brian's going to Sundays. 
Well, no, I'm yeah. adding. I know we're always had Wednesdays. Just now it's live. Okay, cool. What what time Wednesday? 8 p.m. Wednesday. Y'all, I thought you have always been live on Wednesday. Is that live on Monday? No, it's live on Sunday, live on Monday. And it's the premiere on Wednesday. Yeah, so instead yeah, of the premiere on Wednesday, yeah. we've just switched to a temporary live show. Um, and yeah, and Saturday, it'll be co- Comics and Coffee with Cliff. And that'll be May 4th. And my first guest is John's Comics with Kids. Um, S- Sans Kids. So it should be great. Sans kids, exactly. <laughs> Sans kids. <laughs> Sans Sans kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Friday, May 3rd, I have a new Crisis Quest trivia with uh Pressable Defects and Very Gary Comics. Awesome, nice. oh, cool. Remy, you got anything coming up? Uh, yeah, Thursday, we're going to talk about it on uh, on the internet. <laughs> on, on the web, on the line. That's one of on my the favorite YouTube's? shows. It really on the is YouTube's? one of my favorite Sorry. shows. The way that DVH said that, I'm releasing a video on the internet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh, Thursday, uh, nine. And and oh. will it or will it not officially be sponsored by Timu? <laughs> I might start an official sponsorship from Timu. They haven't called me back, but I'll uh, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll plug them anyways. I have a new team of package, dude. The other free stuff that's supposed to come to me finally showed up. Have you been getting December. bags or are you getting boxes? Bags. Just bags. That's, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I'm it's waiting for another. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping for another big bag to arrive. So, yeah. <laughs> you got to tell me about this team. I have never used it before. No, just, don't. Uh, don't do it. Don't, okay. Got gotcha. you. Watch the video. Just watch okay. the video. <laughs> okay. Well, Mark, what you got coming up, brother? I'm uh, only going over to Mad Spidey's channel from here at some point, hanging out over there. But Sunday nights at Weeks In. Cool. Just shit, there's shit all week. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And Chris, what you got coming up, brother? Uh, Wednesdays, I go live at 7 p.m. Uh, Chris, sh- to be yours at another time. Yeah. So, <laughs> heads up. <laughs> Uh, so 7 p.m. Don't, with uh, don't think, Shif- I did, don't think I did. you know what? Steve and I will be with you from 7 to 7 45. <laughs> it's okay, people drop, people drop all the time. It's all good, yeah. Uh, so, uh, show us what you got goes live 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, real time. Let's see, Mark's here, yes, and sir. uh, it's uh, it's an open invitation, new comic book day hangout. You don't have to have brand new comic books. Uh, from New Comic Book Day, you could have books that are brand new to your PC. And uh, Saturdays, I join Rob on this little little show called Only Slabs. And uh, on May the 4th, I'll be going live from my LCS Retro Rocket Comics to show all, thank you, Remy, to show all the New Comic Book Day books that came out. And uh, there might be a giveaway. You may want to swing by and check out that video. And uh, everyone, I can't stress this enough, when you go for a free comic book day, pick up Energon Universe. It is it is such a good read. Such a good read. Definitely. Absolute power. You get Flash Gordon that Jeremy Adams is doing. Also, if, if you miss it, it is being re-released like a week later. So if they run out of the Energon book, then yeah, you, you can, can get pay it. for one at a later date. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would just like to add a side They do note. run out of stuff, don't they? Like, I'm going to yeah. add a side note for free comic book day. Just uh, but please purchase something because these stores yeah. they pay yeah. for free comic book day. Yeah, free comic book day. Is, there's nothing free about free comic book day. Exactly. Yeah. Well, before I start, I'm gonna mention a couple a couple guys mentioned some movies. We got the Gods Must Be Crazy. I've forgotten all about that movie. Oh yeah, great. Oh, and TJ, TJ asked if anybody talked about the history of the world. We did not, but it's also a good one. Yep. So me, I'm going to have, I've been talking about it and I haven't done it yet. Uh, Monday, I will be showing off my other, I'll be opening up some more Marvel packs from Five Below. I got a few of those. That's pretty cool. I'll be doing a Commonverse Community shout outs in this week in Comic History on Tuesday. Basically what I showed here in the live show, I'll be showing that on Tuesday. Next Saturday, because I moved it to Saturdays. Will be the new episode of Tony's Comic Spotlight, which will drop at 8:30 a.m. that day, and it's going to be Amazing Spider-Man 134, featuring the first appearance of the Tarantula, one of my favorite 
B Spider-Man villains of all time. And just so happens to be one of my, I would say birthday book, but it actually came out when I was a year old. So, and then back here next week for another episode of End of the Commerce. Right now, I have no theme planned at the time, but that can always change. And that's all I have. I want to thank everybody for hanging at this esteemed panel for hanging out. Thank you all for hanging out with me, talking about our favorite cult films. I want to thank everybody for hanging out in the chat. You guys were awesome. Anybody watching this on the replay, thank you very much. And I'm going to end this with a special ending from one of my favorite fictional characters from a cult film. So we will see y'all next time and everyone take it easy and God bless. We will see you next time and be safe. Welcome to the human race.